Yeah. Yeah. So what? Why? Why is it that people will cosplay certain characters, and when you and another person cosplay the same character, you find out there's an entire roster of characters yeah, of like, that are similar? Yeah, like series too. It's right. like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's 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 the deal. Part of the part of the deal about being a human being is that you get a universe inside you. You have this vast potential that can manifest in a myriad of different ways. And then there's life, and there's society, and there's school. And you have to sort of narrow down the parts of you that you present to the world in order to not get beat up at school, right? <laughs> you have to learn how to talk like the people around you, you have to learn how to follow certain rules, and blah, blah, blah. And so what happens is you develop what's called a persona, with, you know, like the mask that a Greek tragedian would wear on stage. So you develop your public persona. That is not you. That is a subset of you. That is that is a, a narrow aspect of you. Because if you had been raised in a different part of the country or a different country altogether, you would probably behave differently, speak differently, right? You'd be a, you'd be a different type of person. Uh, but you still have the same galaxy inside you, right? So what happens is we, we, we end up moving towards archetypes, types of characters that our society approves of, okay? And if we can't find one that we approve of, if say we're queer and we can't find an archetype that is readily acceptable by society, we struggle. We can't find our identity. We don't know where we fit, okay? I had that problem when I was growing up because I was not macho. Most of the male archetypes and role models that I, were, I was being shown were very macho. And I didn't, I was like, I'm not, that's not me. I'm not He-Man, like that's not my thing. And, or I'm not G.I. Joe, that's not my thing. And then the elves show up and I go, I'm an elf, thank you. <laughs> right? like, I finally have my archetype. And so it's something that I can identify with. Because it gives me a lens to see the world and a way to interact with it productively so that I don't get beat up at school. If I came with pointy ears, I'd probably get beat up at school. But in my, in, you know, I also ran around with a 65 pound compound bow that nobody could pull back except me. And so, you know, you'd have these big, I'm like, yeah, pull my bow back. You can't. Say a shoot, you know, like. Uh, so, but it, 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 it gave me an anchor. It gave me something to hang on to. And then I could sort of enrich my psyche from there. But I had a home base. So when people find these archetypes that appeal to them, it's home base. It's something that appeals to them. And so if you look at Guardians of the Galaxy, you're like, oh, it's the Avengers in space, right? And, and that pattern is not always repeated so exactly in American storytelling, but it's really iterative in Japanese storytelling. So that you can basically look at Power Rangers all the way back to Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger back in like, what was it, 76 when the first show came out. And we've had like 40 years of Sentai of Power Rangers since then. And it's always the same formula. It's always the hero, the rebel, the fat guy, the kid, and the girl. Every damn time, whether it's Voltron, or Battle of the Planets, or Voltus V, or Combatler V, or what, just over and over, it's that pattern. And so then you sort of parse where you fit into that. And so if you are, you always like to play the rebel, then you're gonna play the rebel in all of those different iterations of that kind of storytelling. His power just gets adapted differently. But but when you I mean you can literally I, and I do a whole presentation on this. There's a literally a chart where I can I can show all like the red ranger, the blue ranger, the green ranger, the yellow ranger, the pink ranger. Like you can line them all up, and then if you put them up, you can literally make continents of rangers of the same color. <laughs> Over 40 years of this, right? It doesn't really vary that much. Every once in a while they'll throw in a white ranger and a black ranger. But then they go away and they go back to the Red Ranger, the Blue Ranger, the Red, you know, and it's like Red Only, Blue Only. Like these, these tropes come happen over and over again because they're satisfying to our lizard brain. But they're satisfying to the people who were raised in that culture. Americans who are not raised in, in the sort of Asian mythology don't understand why is it always five characters? Why do they combine into a giant robot? I don't get it. But the Japanese are like, well, of course that's what they do. Don't they do that over here? And we're like, no, the X-Men don't combine. I don't know what to tell you. Like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, so it's, it's, it can be a different ball of wax. But when you see a character in American storytelling in superheroes that is like sacrificing themselves, literally getting crucified for everybody in the world, and then coming back from the dead, you're like, hmm, where have I seen this before? <laughs> right? It's just that, that, that trope is going to show up over and over over again because it's it's programmed in us. It's way down low on the on the brainstem. 